Brazos Minshew is back in the lab, formulating another revolutionary product. Dr. Brazos Minshew ranks among the most respected product developers in the burgeoning field of nutraceuticals. Responsible for the development of popular health and wellness products with sales exceeding $2 billion, Dr. Minshew is a practicing naturopath, a successful corporate chief executive officer, a recognized medical researcher, and a trusted medical journalist. Plants have been used to promote wellness for thousands of years. Sometimes we know that plants work effectively, they're good remedies, but we don't know why. The plant itself often expands our understanding of how our own body works. Take for example white willow bark. For thousands of years, natives used white willow bark to reduce occasional pain and inflammation. A miracle drug has even been synthesized from white willow bark called aspirin. We didn't know how aspirin worked until science traced the activity of aspirin in the human body and discovered an enzyme called the COX-2 enzyme. So we link the known, that is, white willow bark is good for occasional pain and inflammation, with the new, that aspirin blocks COX-2 enzymes. Following the plant gave us a greater understanding of how our body works. A similar analysis led to the discovery of our endorphin system. Plants from the poppy species were used to handle or to numb occasional pain. Then these plants were refined to create a drug called morphine. Scientists traced morphine to specific receptors in the brain that we later called the endorphin receptors. The knowledge of how morphine works opened the way for discovery of the endorphin system and why we're happy when we exercise and why people in love experience less suffering and physical pain. So we link the known, that is, poppies reduce occasional pain, being in love reduces pain, exercise reduces pain, and we link that with the new, that is, morphine lodges on endorphin receptors in the brain. Again, following the plant gave us a greater understanding of how our body works. A third discovery helped us find the endocannabinoid system. Scientists at Johns Hopkins University began to see evidence for the endocannabinoid system as long ago as 1973. They were trying to find out how cannabis works to numb pain. But it wasn't until 1990 at a meeting of the National Institutes of Health that the endocannabinoid system was explained and named. Now cannabis plant species have been used in human nutrition and health for thousands of years. Cannabis contains two active compounds, cannabinoids and terpenoids. Think of cannabinoids like minerals. They're substantial and they're heavy and they're weighty. And think of terpenes like vitamins. They're active and energetic and they make things happen. In traditional medicine, cannabis has been used for occasional pain and inflammation, to promote a healthy immune system, to improve appetite, and to promote weight loss. Seems like a contradiction, right? Yet native folklore clearly promotes cannabis to address obesity, while other texts use it to control nausea and promote a healthy digestive system. What these scientists learned in 1990 were new discoveries from a known family of plants. So we link the known, that is, cannabis reduces occasional pain, reduces nausea, and improves digestive health, with the new. The endocannabinoid system is activated by cannabis and many other plants with cannabis-like ingredients. Again, following the plant gave us greater understanding of how our body works. In the early 1600s, a philosopher and mathematician named René Descartes first drew a line of distinction between the mind, a thinking but non-acting thing, and the body, an acting but non-thinking thing. By the way, he was really, really smart, but he was also really, really wrong. Still, for hundreds of years after that, we've followed that false notion of mind-body separation, that somehow these were two separate things, but that the discovery of the endocannabinoid system, that separation began to disappear. Scientists followed the activity of the cannabis plant inside the human body and they discovered a whole new system they'd never even seen before. And the newly discovered system, that is the endocannabinoid system, links the body and the brain. It's like discovering the conductor of an amazing and complex orchestra playing an amazing and complex symphony in perfect harmony. That's the function of the endocannabinoid system. You see, the endocannabinoid system has two receptors. The first, CB1, is possibly the most abundant receptor in our brain.
and it also is present in our heart, in our gut, and in our bones, so-called non-thinking organs. The second ECS receptor, CB2, is abundant in our immune system and also in our muscles, in our skin, in our nerves. It's also predominant in our brain and in our bones and our gut and our heart. So the harmony of the endocannabinoid system shows us that there's no separation between the mind and the body. We're one thing. We're who we are as a whole person. The endocannabinoid system seamlessly communicates with the mind and the body and the body and the mind. It's like we say, we feel something in our bones, a non-thinking organ. And yet, think of that metaphor. Or also, we have a gut reaction or we do a gut check and we listen to our heart. These are all metaphors that illustrate the truth that there's no such thing as a mind-body separation. The endocannabinoid system is the connection. Think of the ECS as a continuous conversation between every cell in the human body and brain and every other cell in the human body and brain. The discovery of COX enzymes and the way aspirin reduces occasional pain and inflammation opened our horizon to discover many other plants that behaved like aspirin. For example, ginger, turmeric, and frankincense all reduce COX enzymes in their own unique way. Could it be that the discovery of the ECS would help us understand the activity of other plants as well? Of course. Let's see how. Scientists named the ECS neurotransmitter anandamide, which means bliss in Sanskrit. Many plants besides cannabis turn on that ECS anandamide system. Take chocolate, for example. Chocolate improves our mood by activation of the endocannabinoid system and releasing anandamide. Chocolate also supports healthy blood pressure and a healthy cardiovascular system. The way chocolate works to improve our mind-body wellness was discovered by tracing cannabis and the ECS system. That's interesting, eh? So even though cannabinoids were first discovered in cannabis plant species, such as hemp, cannabinoids that activate the ECS system are found in many other non-cannabis plant species. And these include chocolate, hops, which is the secret ingredient in beer, spices like black pepper, chilies, turmeric, cloves, and vegetables such as carrots. And yes, rabbits have an ECS system, as do most other animals. The discovery of the endocannabinoid system has opened the door to understanding how our body works and how the foods and spices that we eat impact our digestive system, our pain receptors, and every other aspect of mind-body wellness. We link the known effect of cannabinoids with the new understanding of this massive harmonizing system. The discovery of the endocannabinoid system helps us peek into the way our infinite range of emotions impact our immune system, our heart health, our bones, intestines, and all of our other organs. Further, the discovery of the endocannabinoid system shines a light on the foolishness of restricting healthy foods from our diet. To be healthy in mind and body, family and community, to be healthy as a species, we need to nourish the endocannabinoid system. Comfort is Dr. Minshew's crowning achievement. His extensive background in pain management, functional medicine, and behavioral health influenced the development of Comfort, truly a leading edge remedy. Brazos Minshew serves as Chief Executive Officer for So Young America Inc. and is President of Virgin's Naturals Scientific Advisory Panel. Virgin's is a wholly owned subsidiary of Canadian public company Abatis Bioceuticals Corp. Dr. Minshew is an associate member of the American Academy of Naturopathic Physicians, a member of the Institute for Functional Medicine, is national board certified in acupuncture, and a member of the Native American Journalists Association.